Good evening, friends. I hope you've all enjoyed the screening of our film for this evening, Shonku El Dorado, Professor Shonku El Dorado. I'm delighted to say that we have the director of the film, Mr. Sandeep Ray, with us this evening. Sandeep Ji, a very, very warm welcome on behalf of- Thank you, thank you, I'm honored. <laughs> well, we, it is our honor to have you here. Naturally, we would have preferred you to, to be live with us and we're very disappointed that we missed out on that opportunity, but we're very grateful that you made the time for us this evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before we actually go on to speaking about the film, I'd just like to say how heartbroken we all are to see what's happening in India at the moment. Yes, I and know. We, and it's, it's all over the world. It's all over the world. And India is, is, is very it's affected, moment, deeply it's just, affected. It's just in the news. And we hope and mm. pray that your loved ones and your family are all safe. Mm. Thank so, you. <laughs> we are. <laughs> great. So turning now to Shonku or El Dorado, I'm sure the world over, Shonku devotees can't quite believe that this has actually come to a <laughs> big screen. Yes. How did, <laughs> how did the character of Professor Shonku Aldrado come into existence? You know, I have a certain fondness for this character because this was the first character my father created when he started writing for children way back in 1961. Mm -hmm. So uh, that became very popular. Shonku became very popular. And after four or five years, he invented Peluda. The detective. Yes. Uh, so, so Shonku came earlier, sure. and uh, I have, you know, as I said, I have a certain fondness for him, and uh, uh, I wanted to make a film, but I couldn't because due to this, you know, uh, technological reasons and logistics played a very big part because Shonku travels all over the world, attending exactly. seminars, and uh, so. <laughs> Uh, it was tough. It was uh, the budget and everything. But ultimately, you know, the SVF people, the Sri Venkatesh Films people, they came forward and, uh, and said that we want to make a Shonku. And I was very surprised. And they said, uh, we want to make a Shonku. Let's make a feature. Let's do it. Do, uh, do a live action. Not, not animation. Let's do a live action. So I was, I was totally ecstatic. And uh, as I'm sure uh, his fans, <laughs> the uh, yes, absolutely, as, absolutely. As and uh, so, so uh, I, I chose this particular story because uh, it has a Bengali connect throughout the story. Because, because due to Nakur, Nakur Babu, you know, the, the, the character, the, clair the clairvoyant, the clairvoyant <laughs> man, you know, and uh. I, I didn't want to make a totally, you know, English language film. So I wanted to have a Bengali connect throughout. Would you please explain um, your, the reasons behind keeping it with that Bengali? I, I can understand your, your affection as mm. your father's too. Because, um, you know, I, I was fascinated by Nokur Babu and uh, I wanted him to be throughout, you know, throughout okay. the film. I wanted him to be there. And it was in the story in any case. So, uh, and uh, I chose this particular, you know, the locale, the Amazon, because the SBF people, the producers, they had already made a Bengali adventure film in, in, in the Amazon district. Okay. So, uh, so, so they have this, uh, they have the line producers and everything. And I was very, very happy uh, because we, we got some, ex the, the line producers were excellent, absolutely. Uh, so, so I, I said to, I said to the, I said to the producers that, uh, let's make this, let's make this. And, uh, you've already made a film there. So I think it'll be easier for you to, 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 you know, do, do the, uh, do the homework and everything. So, uh, so we went there and it happened, you know, and we had a wonderful time shooting the entire film, but a lot of troubles, a lot of troubles. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, you know, Professor Shonku, Dhritiman Chatterjee, who plays Professor Shonku, mm -hmm. he got sick oh, no. and he had to come back <laughs> and go there again <laughs> after two months. So it was a very tough, uh, um, uh, tough shoot, but a wonderful one, but a wonderful one. The, the unit there was excellent and we had some very uh, uh, interesting faces and um, very good artists, very good. I was very apprehensive 
because okay. I had to match the characters because my father had drawn illustrations with the stories. So, you know, uh, he, he, he wrote his stories. He, he, he did uh, all his own illustrations. So the characters were there, the visual, the visual thing. And so what I did was to, you know, was to send the illustrations to our line producers in Brazil and said that I, I want this. I want, want this character to look like this. I want Jeremy Saunders to look like this. I want uh, Kroll, Wilhelm Kroll to look like, look like my father's illustrations, you know? So, and I, I, we were very successful. We were very successful. We got some wonderful artists from there. You mentioned uh, previous interviews and certainly this is a feeling that I had when I saw the film and I saw it twice. I think the second time it was even more evident than the first time. But you mentioned that the film has a soul. It, mm -hmm. it is a, a great science fiction story. There's no doubt about that. But I think mm. what stays with you is the um, philosophy behind it. Um, mm -hmm. Your father's conviction, his, his, mm. his optimism about the human condition, because you've got mm. here all these amazing inventions that Professor Shonku mm. has actually conjured up. And yet mm. um, he's saying that none of those are for sale and he's not to be bought. So mm. what, you, what would you say is, is actually the, the backbone of the film from, from that perspective, from a philosophical perspective? Shonku yeah. is, is my father. Right. Shonku is my father. Also Peluda is also my father, but <laughs> Shonku is, uh, I, mean, I mean, all his, all his uh, characteristics and mannerisms and all his traits yes. are, you know, like my father, like my father, totally honest, uh, you know, deeply rooted, but at the same time, totally international. And uh, that's why, that's why Shonku is, is something very special to me, very special. And he's, he's uh, totally, totally honest and, uh, he, he's also he a cannot with, be bought, you know, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Also a man with enormous focus. I mean, even in that short film, that comes mm -hmm. through. And I think when you see, uh, when we've seen interviews of your father, mm. what says is the man's incredible focus on whatever it is that he's working on at the time, mm. why he was such a mm. um, And, you know, it's, it's very evident in this film. And we actually, on, on watching the film, there's, there's a little touch of when the industrialist comes along and offers enormous amounts of money for mm. rights to the inventions. Mm. And, uh, Professor Chonku is, I mean, that, that happens in the real world. You get mm -hmm. industrialists coming along wanting to take advantage of inventions. But there was a lot of hostility towards that offer. And it was almost mm. as though your father had actually um, had a premonition about the big pharma effect that we all mm -hmm. speak about. So, yes, 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 yes. You yes. see that, that, that kind of mm -hmm. thing with that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think one of the most uh, heartening parts of the film is when his um, inventions were actually stolen, when the instructions or the drawings were stolen, we didn't mm -hmm. see Professor Shonku panicking or even um, wondering how he was going to get them back. It's almost as though he's saying, that the film is saying that if you have something... He's sort of a very people, saintly character, you know? Yes. It's like a sadhu. <laughs> yes, yes. More or less. <laughs> yes. And it's almost uh, like he's saying that if you have anything truly valuable, you're never going to be, it's never going to be stolen from you. Uh, and, uh, um, and then he goes on and treats the people who wronged him, the villains, uh, uh, the baddies, if you like. Uh, uh, and, um, the result is that they capitulate towards him. They actually confess their crime. Uh, uh, and they become yes. kind of helpers of him. So that's yes. a great message to send out. Uh, uh, and, uh, it's absolutely, absolutely. Message. So, that's that's what you know touched touched me in that particular story, you know. Yes, mm. yes. I think that certainly comes the across. emotion, emotion, and the sentiment, and, and everything. Oh. Yeah, so it is. Ah, actually of course, true huh? that writers do leave a little bit of themselves in everything that mm -hmm. they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. There's a lot. That's true. Of that's true. That's true. Fiction. Because uh, this, 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 this is uh, you know, all his stories carry this kind of a message. 
Yes. All his stories, all his stories. I haven't read all Especially, of especially, stories. especially the Shonku stories. Absolutely, yes. 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 Mm. People are mm. very protective of Shonku. Yes, yes. That's why people. I had to be very careful, but I couldn't because this story was written uh, in the 80s. Sure. And I couldn't possibly, because I had to, you know, uh, because Sao Paulo in the 80s, it's very difficult to, 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 to you know, to, uh, You're talking now about about the setting of about, the, uh, uh, of absolutely, the absolutely. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Amazon is more or less more or less all right, but but the main cities, the Sao Paulo, it's it's, it's 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 impossible. So I had to, you know, uh, mm. you know, it, the, works. The, the, it works the, because mm, it, it it has worked, I think. Yes. Because uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, because nineteen eighties, you can't possibly go uh, that far, you know. You know, in terms of the film, it hasn't actually dated as such, mm. despite mm. No. it's based on science fiction. And we've now, mm. a lot of the inventions that, that we have now would have mm. seemed utterly fantastic at the time, like, you know, mobile phones, video phones that you can walk around with in your hand. Mm -hmm. And yet mm. somehow the film retains its ability to... Uh -huh. We had to be very careful. We had to be very careful. We had thought of a lot of, you know, uh, thought about this a lot. And uh, we don't want our films to date. That's the right. main, you know, well, uh, that's, that's what doesn't. we aim for. <laughs> okay. Um, the story is actually told in flashback. And you have mm. uh, somebody coming along and saying that he found a diary in the crater mm. caused by mm -hmm. a meteorite. And that mm. was in India. So that was in yeah, India, of course. Yeah. And then he's saying that Professor Shonku has not been seen for a few years and mm -hmm. some, a rumor that he had actually perished during one of his experiments. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. a counter rumor to say he was in hiding somewhere in India. So mm -hmm. the last scene... I like the, the second film, idea. I like the second idea. <laughs> <laughs> but the last scene of the film shows Professor Shonku actually um, about to board a plane to go back home. So mm -hmm. we're still left kind of in the dark about what the reality is. Is that because you have a secret? Well, it's an open-ended film, I think. Yeah. So, so I <laughs> the first part, the first part of the the first part of the film is based on the first novel of the first Shonku think, novel. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. One thing that was kind of, um, you know, I was curious about is um, Professor Shonku actually asks a rhetorical question at some point during uh, whilst they were in Sao Paulo. Uh, mm. Says um, so. We should stay away from the paranormal and spirits for our own good. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that. Well, that's what that's what I think uh, Jeremy Saunders says to Shongu. Yes. Yes. Uh, Jeremy um, Saunders is, is very very proper. You know, he doesn't right. believe in all these things. Kroll okay. is much more open minded. Wilhelm Kroll is more, more open minded, but Jeremy Saunders is not. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. Shall we turn now to your personal journey into cinema mm. and your personal and artistic development. Um, I think, you know, to start off with, it would have been a massive deal to be the son of a father with the immense number of talents that Satish yes. did have. He wasn't, mm. I mean, to say that he was a director is actually too limiting a word to describe. No, 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 no. Would, would no. you tell, he would was tell a... our viewers, um, about all the many facets of, of his abilities from his, I, I'll, leave, I'll leave you to, to explain, but all the different things he did apart from uh, film direction, from illustration. My God, my God, that's <laughs> a very difficult question because he was not only a film director, he's not only a filmmaker, mm -hmm. uh, he was an illustrator. He started his, his, his career as an illustrator, uh, as an advertising man, uh, and he did a lot of advertising stuff. And then he was on to music. His first love was Western classical music. So, uh, so he started composing uh, from 1961, composing for his films. Uh, he was a composer, he was an arranger, music arranger, he was an illustrator, he was a graphic artist. Um, and uh, he, he, was, uh, he was an expert, Calligraphist. Yes. His okay. calligraphy is 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 well is, is is known. I mean, he's an exceptional calligrapher, and uh, and a writer and a writer, of course, a writer for for 
children and young adults. He, he started because we have a family magazine called Sondesh, Shondesh, which, which yes. means news, but at the same time is also, also means sweet meat in Bengali, yes. you know, Shondesh. Yeah. Uh, so that was our uh, family magazine. He revived the magazine in 1961. So that's why he, he, he had to contribute. And he was the editor. So uh, first he uh, started, uh, you know, translating Edward Lear and uh, Lewis Carroll for Shondesh in, okay. in Bengali. And then plots came to his head and he started writing stories for children and young adults. And Shonku was born and all his other stories. And he was a science fiction buff. And um, so, uh, so he, was, he, was, he did a lot of, lot of things, a lot of things. And I believe he has also given us uh, the, the font that uh, still- The Ray Roman font, the Ray yes. Roman font is, is still being used. He had designed four fonts and yeah. Ray Roman became very popular. Ray yeah. Roman became very popular. So mm. the amazing diversity of talents that absolutely, he absolutely, all and you know he did his, he did everything. He did the storyboarding. He he he. Uh, you know there were makeup sketches and costume sketches. He bought all the costumes himself, and uh, he was an exceptional draftsman. He did all the sets. He designed all the sets, and he did the publicity. He designed all the publicity He's stuff. A complete one I mean, man band. <laughs> one man, one man, one man uh, band. You know. But I think really, if, if it was just being the son of a father like this, that is an, that is daunting a in itself. But then <laughs> your um, forebears were equally talented, it seems, like your father's father and your father's grandfather were mm -hmm. really illustrious mm -hmm. Renaissance men who mm -hmm. um, were amazingly uh, accomplished in the arts and gifted so, yes yes so how how does it feel to be to have an ancestry like this and yes there, are, there it must be hugely positive because obviously you know you're blessed with mm. Uh, mm. having been around that kind mm -hmm. of um, mm. atmosphere it's daunting <laughs> but you don't think about those things if you think you won't be able to work Sure. So <laughs> I think it's it's better, you know, to keep on working and uh, and uh, but I, I, I'm I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate. I'm I'm absolutely. I'm I I'm very fortunate one, to, one to the, have this lineage. Of course, I think one of the things that comes to mind is you know you have that perennial nature nurture argument, where people say, I mean, you you can you would have understood if all these gifts were passed down from father to son from having mm. learned at their knees, but your father lost his father when he was only two. And mm. his father lost his father when he was about seven. So mm. I think that kind of leads us to conclude that it must be nature rather than nurture, mm -hmm. that responsible mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. you have been blessed with. Do you agree with that? Yes, I, I definitely, I do agree with that. <laughs> definitely, so, wholeheartedly. So, so this leads me on to asking you um, if, if he had all of these things going on at the time that you were born, how, how was home life for you? I mean, where, did he have time to be a, a father as well? He was a family man. I, I've always said that he was a family man. He was working all the time, but at the same time, he gave us a lot of time. And uh, especially during my holidays, uh, you know, we always went out for our holidays and uh, so he was there sure. he was there and and the most interesting thing was when he was uh, you know uh, uh, doing a doing an outdoor shoot mm -hmm. he planned his outdoor shoot during my holidays oh that's so we could all be there with him wow so it's 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 it's, yeah. it's so more or less like that. Play. It's more or less like that. Yes. He was a very prolific director. So I think in, in thirty five films in about thirty films in about thirty five years or something like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, from nineteen fifty five to nineteen ninety one. And someone who owed a huge responsibility to his own unit. Because, own unit. Uh, That's why I mean, he had to work. That's why yeah. he had to work. You know, constantly sure. to feed his unit. To feed his unit. So, so he was a so, complete man. He was not only well, the family, um, uh, 
talents in the arts, we all know, but then he also had an obligation to the people that were obligation, huh? which was uh -huh. to see. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I was just wondering um, how the dynamics would have been that you live with this incredible man and your mother mm. must have been an incredible woman to have. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. She was, she was always there. She was always there. She was always helping him. And, uh, um, you know, uh, whenever he was, he wrote a script, he first showed it to my mother. And oh. anything he did, he first showed, showed it to this mother. That and, effect, but... uh, uh, absolute, absolute. Okay. And uh, especially when he was writing, because my mother was, my father was a science sci-fi addict. My mother was a detective fiction. I mean, he, he, okay. she was absolutely, you know, uh, she, she read all, all detective stories. Uh, including, you know, of course, Agatha Christie and Nayo Marsh and Dorothy L. Sayers and everybody. So she was, she was a detective uh, fiction fan. And whenever my father wrote, especially whenever he wrote a Peluda story, a detective mm -hmm. story, he gave the manuscript to my mother with a pencil. Oh. And he said that, you know, <laughs> you do all your corrections, see if the motive is right, see if the characters are, you know, they're all right. And so he, he, he depended on, a lot on my mother. When it came down to your choice of career, mm -hmm. of when, how old were you when you became aware of the very rarefied atmosphere that you grew up in? Because a lot of children take... Well, well I was, I was, you know, I was, I became interested in the post-production part of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. I was interested in the editing. I was not that interested in the shooting part of it, but I was, I was interested in the post-production, uh, the, 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 the trackling, the editing, and, uh, you know, the mixing and everything. So, um, and I still consider myself, uh, a student of editing so i love editing i love i love i love that thing but uh, uh, you know the the interest came much later first i wanted to be a graphic artist and okay. then the <laughs> well, uh, another chicken well what i did was you know what i did for the last you know for, from from uh, from hirok raja deshe he made a film called the kingdom of diamonds okay. and from hirok raja deshe he uh, you know, gave all this, uh, you know, I did most of his finished artworks for, mm -hmm. for the publicity campaign. That's incredible. For the publicity campaign of his films. So he gave his, you know, the first draft and, and said that you, you, you do, the, do the finished thing and uh, send, it, send it off to the printers. So uh, from, from the Kingdom of Diamonds onwards, let's say from the late 70s, I, you know, most of the finished artworks, the publicity artworks are mine. Uh, so the first, I wanted to be a graphic artist. Then, and, you know, um, you know the, the the scenario changed a little, and then I became interested in in in, in filmmaking, and uh, I wanted to start my career with a Peluda film. Mm -hmm. uh, that was early 80s, 80, 81. Your first, and your first foray. Your first, I wanted to, uh, yes. to, 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 to begin my, 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 start my film career with, with the Peluda film. Mm -hmm. But I was very nervous because a few years back, you know, uh, the uh, Golden Fortress was made and uh, the Elephant God, sure. Elephant God, uh, mm -hmm. two Peluda films made by my father. So I was, I was, slightly you know is nervous okay. <laughs> uh, and i i decided no no it, it'll be it'll be a lot of com comparisons and uh, you know uh, i'll be in a lot of trouble so let's make another uh, a different kind of film so i chose a photic chant which is again written by my father and it was a very favorite story a favorite of mine so I started my film career with photic chant from having followed your career path it's pretty obvious that you've done um, you yourself have a multi-directional approach to your filmmaking where you've mm -hmm. a camera and you've done you've given music for films etc do you find mm -hmm. do you feel that uh, further on in your career you're going to be adopting a more collaborative approach or would you would it be very difficult for you to let go of having that control that doing all these things yourself gives you uh... yes I think uh, I think um, a time will come 
but for Shonku, I had a very good DOP. Right. And he did, did the, you know, the, the operating of the camera. I used to operate my own camera. But that, is, that has become too exhaustive, you know. <laughs> so, and maybe I'm getting a bit older. So, uh, so I, you know, uh, from, from this film onwards, mm -hmm. because I have to depend a lot on, on, on other people because uh, uh, my, I, I've got a very good DOP, as I said earlier, and he's an exceptional uh, camera operator. So I trust him completely. And, but the other facets, you know, but the other, other I, have to, I have to be a little stern. Yes. Yeah. So, so from, from, from I, I do my own storyboarding and uh, I do my own on, 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 on a score. I, I do the scoring also. I do the music for my film. So it's more or less, except so for the DOP part. Adopting more except for the except for the DOP it. part, and now you know it's become very difficult because I'm used to films, and yes. now you know it's it's from analog. You've 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 uh, it's, it's come to the, a digital age, so uh, you have to <laughs> be very careful. We may have a, uh, yes, approach will be a little different, of course. In terms of your plans for the centenary celebrations, have they been mm. just deferred or have they? Uh... Have been deferred, can't be helped because oh, okay. uh, we want to, we want to do, do, do a physical thing, but not, not a virtual thing. Uh, but we had many plans. We had a, a centenary, you know, memorial lecture. Yes. There'll be seminars, there'll be exhibitions, multiple exhibitions of his uh, different, you know, as one as a graphic artist, one as a filmmaker, sure. one as a composer. And of, of, uh, material available. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've been, uh, you know, cleaning up his room uh, during the lockdown and I've found a lot of things. <laughs> yes, it's Quite a incredible. treasure trove of treasure trove of, you know, letters and, you know, and negatives and uh, and his, uh, and not his writings as such, but his illustrations and a whole lot of things. Uh, because uh, I had a, I had a great time during the lockdown because I was, I was, you know, constantly <laughs> discovering a lot of his things, uh, which I didn't know existed. So it was, it was more of a revelation. <laughs> we now look forward it to was, benefiting from these when you actually. Oh, Absolutely, exactly. because we'll be we'll be exhibiting a lot of the stuff uh, yeah. if, when the situation improves. Uh, it's it's it, the scenario is still very bad here in in, in of India it's, it's wow. and all over the world, in fact. But um, in fact, it it'll give us something to look forward to. Because there'll be there'll be books, you know, coming out in print print media. There's a lot of things happening because most of the you know, Bengali journals, they are, they are bringing out special issues and tribute issues and whatnot. And uh, Shandesh also, I'm editing Shandesh right now. And, uh, you know, uh, there'll be special issues, of course, uh, uh, during this, 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 you know, the centenary year. But uh, nothing it's else, nice unfortunately. We had a lot of plans, but they have been deferred. Before we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you, you have a huge band of very dedicated fans here in the UK. Do you have a message for um, your fans here? What, what message would you like to? Well, see my films and see my father's films. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's what, what I can say right now. I mean, what else is there to say? <laughs> I'm but sure. I'm very happy. I'm very happy that uh, that uh, Shonku is being shown there, and uh, I'm very happy. And uh, thanks to you. Thanks to all it's of been, you. It's been an absolute honor and a privilege to have you here with us. Of course, as we said earlier, we'd have preferred you to be here in person, but we're just delighted that we've had this opportunity to actually speak to you um, via this medium. Um, I, it just remains for me to say that um, tickets for the um, UK Asian Film Festival 23rd edition are available on www.ukaff.com, uh, where the full festival details will be. And um, I think everyone is virtually joining me in thanking you for coming along today. And we wish you all the very best for when you actually undertake the centenary celebrations and we look forward to your next film.
Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. It's okay. been a pleasure. <laughs>